they have you write why you're doing the stem cells. So I wrote like, you know, pain-free. Um, I wrote health, love, babies, because that's, you know, that's the yeah, things that I wanted. Yeah, you gotta get babies out, Yeah, man. you know, I mean, let's do, let's get You gotta breed. A, yeah, I do, and I, so they can do all the chores for me, you know? That's, that's why you make them. Or when I come to the range, they can pick Crispy's up breasts. Crispy's wife is just over there shaking his head. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're on the way to Crispy's house, uh, and I wanted to catch up because everybody's kind of scattered to the wind right now. Evan's in Salt Lake. Matt is in Tennessee doing some stuff with the Warriors Heart nonprofit. Richard is working on a little super secret project, and then Jared's down in Mexico. Um, as I'm sure you've seen, uh, there is quite a situation happening in Afghanistan right now which is very unfortunate. And so I wanna take a second to uh, tee this up for Marty Scovelin, the editor over at Coffee or Die, uh, and just give us sort of a rundown as to what Coffee or Die has been up to over the course of the last couple days. We've been busy over here at Coffee or Die magazine. Uh, I gotta say that these last couple weeks, it, it's really escalated. The fall of Afghanistan, we first started tracking the Taliban as the evacuation was announced and, and the withdrawal was announced, the, the Taliban started taking district and province capitals, uh, sweeping across Afghanistan. Everything started to collapse around Kabul. And at the time, we had a reporter that got stuck behind Taliban lines up in Mazari -e Sharif. Uh, and we had another reporter fly in with Ark Salas uh, into the Hamid Karzai International Airport in, in Kabul. And from there, we saw not only the country fall, the president of Afghanistan flee, but the military have to actually reinsert more troops into Kabul just to facilitate uh, the evacuation of the embassy and then almost as an afterthought, the evacuation of our Afghan allies and American citizens. It's been heart-wrenching to kind of watch uh, everything from, you know, the Marines and the paratroopers on the ground there defending H. Kaya, uh, having, you know, young 19, 20, 21 year old uh, soldiers and Marines having to make these life and death decisions about who gets to come in, who gets to leave. Stories of heroics like the Air Force crew who evacuated over 800 people on a single C-17 flight, but also some really horrific things. We lost 13 Americans in a cowardly terrorist attack. Some of the stuff that we're asking our service members to do on our behalf right now, uh, I just, it, it's almost, it's not normal war stuff. Me and a lot of other People who deployed have talked about how this is nothing like we ever had to face. This is a subject that's near and dear to our hearts, and to see how it's all gone, uh, you know, there's just so many questions about why wasn't more done sooner? Uh, why, why do we have to rely on this massive evacuation effort in 10 days? Why is the deadline so strict? Should the deadline be based on conditions on the ground? Isn't it more important? for us to evacuate every American, every Afghan ally who wants out, rather than meet a deadline? You know, there's a lot of questions out there that me and a lot of other people have. Are we using our military to their fullest extent? You know, why weren't they, why aren't more of our military personnel, our special operations units being used to go out and perform these high-risk evacuations, uh, high-risk personnel recovery? There's examples of it happening, but it's not happening enough. It's not happening fast enough. Here at Black Rifle Coffee, we've got a lot of Afghan commandos that work for the company that, that immigrated over here to the U.S. Uh, we need to make sure we're ready to support our Afghan allies when they get here to the U.S. Uh, and make sure that they are, you know, welcomed into American arms. America is not defined by a single administration or a single congressional session or, or a, a single general or admiral or, or anything like that. America is defined by its people and we the people need to do the right thing and demand one, transparency about what's going on, uh, demand that there be an investigation after the fact of, about why everything went so wrong and why everything was so last minute, but then also do our part, not just ask the hard questions, but go out and put actions behind our words and make sure that we're taking care of those who fought on our behalf, that, that we're tasked with this near impossible mission. Many on the Coffee or Die team are veterans of Afghanistan. Both Nolan and I have actually returned to Afghanistan to report there. It, it's it's a, a topic that's very near and dear to us, but we're trying to do our best to tell the stories both with our people like Jericho Denman on the ground, to Holly McKay, who is up there in Mazar, to the people back here who are doing important reporting. The Coffee or Die team, we're devoted to covering it, and we're staying true to our charter and putting boots on the ground around the world to make sure that uh, 
we're getting the ground truth to our readers, uh, our viewers, and uh, making sure people are staying informed on this, even if uh, there's efforts to silence that effort. You know, most of the journalists were kicked off of the airfield uh, or, you know, basically put in confinement uh, until they could be evacuated. If you want to keep up with everything that we're doing, uh, go to coffeeordie.com, subscribe to our newsletter, check our stories, follow us on social media. We're on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, whatever you use, subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're getting you the news that you really want to hear. So that's all I got, man. Back to you. A little overdue, again, Crispy, his espresso machine, he's been bugging us for a while on this. In addition to that, he just got back from Columbia and he went down there to go do stem cell therapy. And after getting burned over a majority of his body, having his leg amputated, uh, Crispy's had a really unique journey uh, trying to just improve his overall health and health and well-being over the course of the last few years here. So. Um, I really wanted to come down and like see what he's learned after coming back from doing stem cell therapy, how he's feeling, how he's getting treated, and hopefully be able to kind of inform and, and pass on some knowledge to the rest of the veteran. So a little bit of coffee, a little bit of chat, and uh, I don't know, maybe we'll go to range. Maybe we'll do a little bit of pew pew this afternoon. Who knows? We'll see what happens. Miguel just joined the team about two weeks ago. He's coming on the branding side of stuff. And uh, we, I just walked in and uh, didn't realize that these two knew each other back in middle school. And bro, it's crazy, contact. bro, it's crazy. Holy shit. Yeah, it's just weird how that works out in life sometimes. Bro, it's nuts. How long is it? Probably 12, 12, 11 years old, something like that. How old were we, like 14? Yeah, yeah probably 13. 20 years ago, bro, yeah. 35. Yeah, 36. Yeah, that's nuts. Okay, half our lives. Yeah, holy shit. I didn't even know you joined the service either. Yeah, man. That's really? nuts. Just bringing people back together to brown water. That's crazy, dude. That's crazy. Moving on. Let's get this yeah, fucking coffee water. <laughs> 20 pound press. Knock the tamp. Get it off the sides. 35 pound press, spin, off. That's pretty close. Money, dude. Ooh. Ooh, I think that's the one. That is it. Hot damn. I think that's the one. All right, Crispy. Verdict. It smells good. Let's give it a shot. This is AK-47 espresso. That's money, dude. Is that it? Yeah. All right. Oh, that's so good. Dude, that is perfect. You like it? Yep. Hell yeah. I'm sure you will. I'm a sacrifice. Uh, give me the background on why you were interested in stem cell therapy and what that road was like? Well, I mean, initially, to be honest with you, like the interest in stem cells first came from listening to Joe Rogan on several podcasts talking about it and the benefits and whatnot. So the opportunity presented itself and I was like, let's do this, let's go. And we ended up flying down to Medellin, Colombia and the first day that we were there, it was just, all right, let's go. And I'm like, wait, is that easy? And they're like, yeah. And um, when we went through it, I, when I was receiving the bag, they read it and then tell you like 100 million, you know, stem cells on the first treatment. And then they have you write why you're doing the stem cells. So I wrote like, you know, pain-free. Um, I wrote health, love, 
babies because that's you know that's the yeah, things you gotta that get I want. Babies out, yeah, man. you know, I mean, let's do. Uh, you gotta get breed. A, yeah, I do, and I, so they can do all the chores for me. You know, <laughs> that's why you make them. Or when I come to the range, they can. Crispy's wife is just over there shaking his head. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, um, I got emotional, man, when I was writing it because I was like, man, this little bag here um, could potentially take all my chronic pain away. It yeah. could provide a better lifestyle. Um, so I got emotional because I'm like, I've never, I've never been told this right here can cure you. Like this right here is going to take all that stuff away. It's always been like, well, it might do this, but here are the, the symptoms or the side effects that, that you know, that this medication is going to do. And for someone to actually hold something in front of them and be like, this is going to take your pain away. This is going to help your neurons reattach. This is going to help with your TBI. This is going to help with everything that you've always experienced and the pain that you live with. So I was like, it, it got me because I'm like, here I am. Like, we've made the journey. And so let's get this done. And Got a hundred million on Monday, and here in the U.S., I think the max that you can get on a treatment is ten thousand stem cells, which is better than nothing. But it really doesn't do anything to the body. Yeah, like, not versus. So you went down to Colombia and you had a hundred million on Monday, fifty million the next day, and in reality, they told me that I received one hundred and sixty-five million. But just like anything, some are going to die, right? So not all of them are going to take. So they give you a little bit more. So that you can get 150 million. So <laughs> going there and getting 150 million, and I only have to do it once a year, opposed to doing it here in the U.S. and going every other month to get 10,000, was a no-brainer. Yeah. Like, and you know, they they did tell us there was going to be some potential side effects, like flu-like symptoms, a little fever. Experienced it a little bit, not a lot, and. And I was like, man, I don't think I'm really going to see anything. I, I, I was kind of, I, I went earnest to it, but not really. I was kind of skeptical because I was like, this shit ain't going to work. Like, nothing else has worked. And within the first day, man, like, the inflammation on my body, drastically gone. Like, we were walking in Colombia, my leg was falling off because that's how much of the inflammation was gone. The the suction cup that it fits in usually. Oh yeah, the actual prosthetic, the, the socket. The inflammation went down so much that it was just like, it was, you gotta was get refit for pretty it. Pretty much, and I haven't done it yet because I'm still, still the inflammation is still going down. So I don't wanna get one and then, you know, it shrinks more and then I have to do it again. So I'm waiting. Now, like I've, I've caught myself, I'm more focused. I'm, I got more energy, I'm like, Let's get out of bed. Let's go do something. Like, I'm so energized. And one of the mornings I woke up, dude, and I was always like, I was like almost in tears because I woke up and for the first time in a long time, no pain. Like, I woke up and I'm like, shit. This is where this it feels doesn't like, hurt. Huh? Like, my legs don't hurt. Like, my ankles aren't popping. I was like, is this what it feels like to not be in pain? I was like, so I got a little motion and I just sat there and I was like, holy shit, like it's working. Like it's it's doing what it's supposed to do. And so I was like, damn. Well, let's see if this stem cell stuff made you a better shooter. I, that I don't know. <laughs> I gotta ask about that. <laughs> I doubt it, but we'll see. Logan, how much do you trust me? Hold one out <laughs> like this. After years of kind of struggling and going through hundreds of surgeries, this 15 minutes with the stem cell drip like had more impact on you than all of that previous few years. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. That's incredible, man. It's it's crazy. Like, it's, what do you think about like the impact that that can have on dudes who have serious injuries? Like, like it's outstanding. Yeah, it's. I mean. I'm happy. I'm like, they're, they're just, it just changed the quality of my life. And I, I'm, I'm sitting there wondering why we can't do that here in the U.S. and provide that for guys that are truly, truly in chronic pain. And not just wounded service members, but everybody throughout the country that suffered from any sort of disability or uh, injury, uh, whatever trauma they had in their lives. Like, so many people can benefit from this. Well, I hope, you know, 
people like yourself kind of sharing these like little epiphanies that you have after going through this kind of changes the scope of the availability here in the US, but. For sure. I mean, if it doesn't, man, like at least people know that this is an, a, an option. very viable option. Yeah, man. for sure. Thanks for that little run through, man. Yeah, man, for sure, of course. I'm glad you're feeling better. Dude, me too, you're telling me. I'm like, it's just been 360, bro. Like, yeah. life changing. Yeah. I think the American citizens deserve some answers as to why these were not processed and why they were not processed fast enough to protect the people that have protected us, quite frankly. And what this does is it takes away the credibility. It continues to degrade the professional image of the American warfighter, and this will take generations to repair. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in the military, we have something that's um, uh, prior planning prevents uh, bad performance. Yeah. And this was obviously very ill planned. And the commanders of the Pentagon should be absolutely ashamed. This is not only a stain for the Afghanis, this is, this is very difficult for the American right. warfighter to yeah. see all of their hard work uh, basically being represented this way.